Today we're working on our Carolina Skiff. This is a 198 DLV V-Series. There's very, very little wood in the construction of this boat. Even the transom, the best we could tell, is solid fiberglass. The floor is solid fiberglass. Just about the only place that there's actually wood in this boat is on the front deck. A lot of times when you've had hardware screwed into the deck and you've got various holes that have been punctured through this surface, the water gets down underneath the skin of this deck and rots out the plywood. You can see with this one, this thing is kind of like a trampoline. It's all flexible. There's really nothing hard behind the fiberglass anymore. When the plywood gets all rotted, you actually get a concave surface right there on the front deck. You can see there's probably a good one inch dip underneath that level right there. I called around to several local Carolina Skiff dealers and nobody can order this part. So I'm going to show you a very creative way to repair this. We're going to keep the original finish on the front deck. We've actually made two videos. One is to replace the rotten wood in the complete front deck. And the other is how to put these two hatches in here, this being a fish box and this being an anchor box. While the two videos are closely related, you can do one without the other. And you can see how rotted, you know, this thing was. Now by taking a look at this piece that came out, you can see that there's actually two fiberglass sides on this thing. And we should be able just to separate this because it's so rotted to begin with. The plywood inside this is all in like six inch squares. We're going to go ahead and take this front deck off. To get the front deck off, you'll need to take off these cleats and several bolts that are around the perimeter of the thing, both of which the nuts are on the back side of the deck. We're going to use our multi-till. It's got some type of foam type of caulk or whatever. It looks like this will just slice right through it. Once you've gotten under the edge of it, you can actually just keep pulling up. And if you work your way down, it'll just keep pulling this thing right out of here. Next, we'll use our grinder with a diamond wheel to cut around the edge of this plywood that needs to come out of here. And now this fiberglass backing will just peel right off of here. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're gonna pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair, what's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life, and all your life, have you ever told a lie before? I have, and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something, even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have, and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible, for which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell. Or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later he defeated death and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. The plywood that came out of this thing was actually 5 8 inch. Let's use the pressure washer with the rotary tip and we'll clean this thing up. A kind of funny way of looking at it is the more rotted the deck is, the easier this job is. We're going to use our chisel and see if we can get some of these bigger pieces off. The next thing we're going to do is see in the back side of this deck, there's a lot of raised areas that were between these wooden squares that have fiberglass that kind of seeped through when they made this thing. So we're going to go ahead and knock this one down to level.
when we go to lay this thing down flat and attach it to our new plywood, there'll be a little bit of a raised area here and it'll have an air pocket and that spot will be a little bit flexible, you know, when you step on it. So by getting this thing totally flat, the whole thing will get attached to the new plywood and it'll be like super firm when you walk on it. I've got my piece of three quarter pressure treated plywood. I've cut the notched edges on both sides. It fits very nice and snugly in this pattern from Carolina Skiff. I've laid a tarp out so that way the fiberglass doesn't get on our deck and we're starting to put fiberglass mat down on top of this board and this will be the surface that's going to glue to the old front deck. Cutting all the pieces to fit I'm using a staple gun to actually attach the fiberglass to the board and that way it doesn't slide around during this process. You can see how these staples stick up just a little bit, which will cause the two surfaces not to contact each other on 100% of the surface. So we'll come back with a hammer and just tapping them down. I think if I was to do this over, I would do it without the mat, and then I would just pour the resin over the top of the plywood and just quickly swash it all around with a paintbrush and set the thing in place. With two people, the time it took us to saturate the resin into the fiberglass mat was right around eight minutes, and we started to get tacky on our fiberglass, so we had to prematurely go ahead and put the fiberglass deck over the top of the plywood. Because actually, you can take your fingernails and rub around. You can tell where the thing is actually adhered good. And when I get over close to these edges right over here, that's where I have some areas that didn't get adhered to. And if I come over on the side, I can actually see where I can push this in and out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some resin and put on these edges, and we're going to drain it back in there. But, so we're actually able to spread this piece back apart right here. And what we're doing is we're dumping resin down through this crack and letting it seep all the way down through the lower areas. And then we come back and we put some clamps on it like that. And on the other side that we already did this, it seemed to have sealed it up really nice and tight against the plywood. We went ahead and glued the piece of gel-coated fiberglass that we cut out of the deck onto this new piece of plywood. On this one, we did not use the fiberglass mat between the two pieces. We actually just poured the gel coat on top of the piece of plywood. We used a brush and painted it back and forth. We used a brush and also painted it on the back side of the gel-coated piece we cut out of the deck. Then we actually poured a big pile of it right in the middle. We put a big flat piece of weight on top of it. And after it dried, it doesn't seem to have any of those air spots on it, you know, like the other piece did when we used the fiberglass mat underneath. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this gap right here. We're not going to fill it completely up with resin, but we're going to put enough in there that if there's any little gap underneath the plywood and the fiberglass, it'll kind of roll under. And then we're going to come back and put the fiberglass mat along here. So I'll show you how that works. We went through and all the holes that had been previously drilled in the deck, that's what caused this deck to rot out in the first place. We went back and filled them with fiberglass resin. Hey, as far as the eternal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you are real and you are out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.